The art of photography has undergone a radical transformation in the last several decades, with traditional film giving way to digital and sparkling images created and shared in an instant from the phone in your pocket. But there are some photographers who remain convinced that the old ways are worth preserving. One of them is Oregon's Christopher Burkett, who works slowly and patiently to create some of the highest resolution photographs ever made. NewsHour Weekend Special Correspondent Joanne Elgar Jennings has our story. From blueberry fields in Maine, to swirling veritrum plants in Alaska, to a lone cottonwood tree in Utah, and resplendent leaves at sunset in his native Oregon, Christopher Burkett has been photographing the American landscape for over four decades. He and his wife Ruth have lugged their camera gear across all 50 states. What we usually do is we go to a place that, we, that looks like it has photographic potential and then we stay there until we don't see any pictures, and that might be half an hour, it might be a week. On this day, that won't be necessary because we're just in their backyard in Milwaukee, Oregon. Burkett is demonstrating his 8x10 camera. It's the same type Ansel Adams favored for his landscape photography. Burkett says it provides the ultimate in image quality. It is awkward, it's heavy, it's a struggle with depth of field, struggle with wind motion, uh, but if you get an image, you really have something really uh, in-depth to work with. When Burkett looks through his lens, he says the world he sees is one of indescribable beauty. If you're really trying to work with photography, you find out real rapidly that seeing things and photographing them can be quite different. And in fact, you have an image that is, from that viewpoint of the camera, is actually higher resolution than you would normally experience the world from that viewpoint and that angle. So you have a, essentially a certain element of, I can't really call it super realism because it's real, but it's more real than what we normally see. He says he wants to make both the physical and the ethereal accessible. And to me, again, that's the whole point of doing it, is to, it's not just to present a pretty picture, but to present something that shows people something that maybe they haven't seen or experienced and something really worthwhile. Light and luminosity are critical elements of Burkett's work. That's what photography is all about, is writing with light. And when you go up to the print, I want light to come out. You know, you don't have to go find it, it's coming out. When I'm looking at a scene, I know what I'm seeing, but then I look to see where the light is coming from and what that color of light is. And many times in photographs, what makes things come alive are opposite colors illuminating a scene because you get more shape and more color differentiation. For Burkett, photography is not just an artistic, but a spiritual experience that's informed by his religious faith. As a young man, he spent seven years as a brother in the Eastern Orthodox Church. I would come out of church sometimes after uh, communion service and I would see light in the world, you know, really, truly see light in the world, and I knew it was real. And if it was real, then I figured maybe there was some way I could try to photograph that. Burkett has also studied meteorology, geology, and functions of the human eye, all to advance his photographic skills. But capturing the images is just one part of the process. Burkett is one of a handful of photographers printing from color transparency film onto a now discontinued paper called Cibachrome. And it's the only paper that was ever made that had the dyes in the paper when it was made. The processing takes away all the unwanted dye and you're left with the image itself, which is completely stable because there's no chemical residue in there, there's just dyes in the paper. Cibachrome was first sold in the 1960s. As photography shifted from using analog film to digital image sensors, many professional photographers abandoned the technique, but Burkett continued to embrace it. In 2011, when the company stopped making Cibachrome, Burkett bought a 10-year supply of the paper. It's amazing that everything is in focus. It's yeah. like you're bringing us there. How do you get that depth where it's I can you know well, see the bottom of the water there? The Cibachrome has that depth to the image where I don't think any other print material would have that kind of, not just luminosity, but almost seems physically deep, you know. I've had people at gallery openings even kind of go like this to make sure you haven't glued something on the top of the print. These days, Burkett spends most of his time focused on printing in his studio. He walked us through the elaborate process. One step is called masking. 
we make a black and white negative uh, that this is going to be sandwiched with this and this is going to determine the overall contrast of the print. Then he adjusts the color. When you get exactly the right color balance and then even the slight opposite colors, let's say in the veins of green on a green leaf, will start to pop, you might say, or become more luminous. And that's when you know you've got it. Yeah, that's when you know you have it. But it's the next step that Burkett says is the most crucial. So the light is being projected onto the paper. I'm withholding light by my dodging tools, which is going to darken those areas. And I have to keep the items moving to get a smooth edge so there's no evidence of the darkening of little bright areas. The process is then reversed with a tool that allows in more light and brightens certain areas of the image. It's an exacting dance, precisely choreographed to a score which Burkett arranges specifically for each print. You have to plan it out ahead of time where one goes in first, then the other one goes in while this was partway there, then you move it to another one, then you have both of them here and both of them there. How important is timing in this process? Well, it's extremely important. Sometimes just in the dodging, uh, half a second difference, plus or minus, and the print's no good, just in one little area. It usually takes Burkett about eight hours to make all adjustments he needs to perfect an image. And when it's finally finished? We we'll take the print like this. I'm going to take it over here very carefully. Burkett is keenly aware that he has a limited supply of Cepachrome paper, which degrades over time. So he's racing the clock, trying to print as many images as he can before the chemicals in paper lose their effectiveness. I'm still figuring out how many of different images I want to print as kind of a legacy of my work. Because uh, And there are many times I'm printing images now in certain sizes that I know that that's the last time I'm going to print those in that size. So it's kind of a gradual winding down. While Burkett says he has enormous respect for the work others create with digital photography, once he runs out of his printing paper, he'll hang up his camera. I also realize there's going to be one day when, when I leave the darkroom, I... And I, turn, and I turn the lights off, and that's the last time I'm going to be in there. So, so that's, a, that's a difficult thing, because I love what I do. And going out and photographing is one thing, but spending time and bringing the light out of these images and to share with other people is really what it's all about.